Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with broiled chicken. That's right, today we're covering the lost art of broiling chicken, a method that used to be a lot more popular. In fact, a smaller two and a half pound chicken is actually called a broiler. And if done correctly, you're gonna be enjoying something that looks and feels and tastes like it came off a grill. So this is a great plan B for when you want a grilled chicken, but the weather didn't cooperate and you're stuck inside, this is gonna work beautifully, and this is how you do it. So first up, we're gonna need some kind of pan or dish to broil the chicken in. And for me, a baking dish works great for that. And as you can see, I actually put some sliced onion in the bottom. Not only is that onion gonna subtly sweeten the chicken, but it's also gonna add some moisture into what is an otherwise dry heat method. And then on top of that, I'm gonna lay my chicken. I got two halves. And one thing you do wanna pay attention to here is to make sure this chicken's very dry. So if there is some dampness, make sure you pat it with a paper towel before you lay it in here. And then all we need to do here before it goes under the broiler is season it up. And because I'm just doing a simple techniques demo, I'm just gonna go with salt. But if you were to use some other kind of dry rub combination, I would be cool with that. In fact, I would encourage it. But anyway, I'm gonna season that skin side generously with kosher salts. And then I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and we'll go ahead and season that other side. And we're actually gonna start it under the broiler this way, which we'll call the bone side, I guess. So we will generously salt that side also. And at that point, it's ready to go under the broiler. And here's mine, fairly standard gas style broiler, heat coming from the top. And I'll talk more about this on the blog, but ideally I like my chicken to be about seven or eight inches under the heat. And we'll go ahead and grab that chicken, put it under the broiler, and I'm gonna let that go for about seven minutes. And I'm gonna take it out, it's gonna look something like that. And then we'll go ahead and flip it over. And then I'm not sure if you have to, but I did reapply some salt to the skin side. It just seemed like it wanted me to do that. So always listen to your chicken. And then we're gonna go ahead and put that back in for another seven minutes. And we're gonna kind of repeat that process, letting it go for six or seven minutes, flipping it over, letting that side go for six or seven minutes, flipping it back over, etc. So a little bit of a simulation of a rotisserie method where the chicken's natural fat and juices are kind of basting the other side as they run down. And after seven minutes on that side, that's what we were looking at. And because a broiler is just really an upside down grill, you are gonna get the same kind of caramelization and char marks as you would on a grill. But that's fine, we want that. When it comes to grilling and broiling, charring is caring. You've seen the t-shirt. So we'll flip that over. And at this point, we're about halfway through the cooking process, give or take. You know I don't give exact times. I mean, roughly this should take you about a half hour, 35 minutes, something like that. But you know the drill, you're gonna double check with a thermometer. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that back in for seven minutes. And then ideally we wanna finish with the skin side up. So we'll flip it over and we'll finish it like that. So we get a nice crisp finish. And the reason this method works so nicely is because like the outdoor grill, you're getting a very intense dry direct heat. And if I said it once, I've said it a hundred times, half chickens love dry intense direct heat. So I let that go for about seven minutes. And when mine was done, it looked like this. It really should look like something that came off the backyard grill. And not only will it look like it, hopefully it sounds like it. Check it out. In fact, to be honest, that probably sounds better than what you'd get off a backyard grill. Oh, and by the way, you didn't hear this from me, but save those onions. And when you're done eating your chicken, you can combine that with the bones and make a couple cups of really nice stock. But anyway, we're going to plate that up. I'm going to serve this very simply, half a lemon with some fresh oregano on it. And that side dish is definitely not a quinoa salad that my wife made me eat. I forget what it actually was, but it wasn't that. And then a neat little trick here. When I go to squeeze the lemon, I actually smash that oregano into it as I squeeze. And that's gonna give that juice a little touch of that herby flavor. Very nice. So I squeezed that over. I went ahead and cut in and it was magnificent. So tender, so juicy, so flavorful. And again, it's only with salt here. Imagine this with your favorite spice rub. I mean, I don't even know what that is and I'm imagining it's gonna be amazing. And we'll do one more, a little closer up. And I don't mean to brag, but you can really see in this close up just how juicy and succulent that meat is. But anyway, like I said, I wanted to do a little refresher course on the beauty of the broiled chicken. Oh, and by the way, this is another 1080p test and probably the last one that I will mention. Eventually, they're all gonna be like this. Although hopefully a little better as I figure out how to do stuff. But anyway, let me know if you notice any issues technologically speaking. Otherwise, I really hope you give this delicious broiled chicken recipe a try soon, all right? So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.